Do you ever wonder about trimming your quail's beak? Is it necessary? And if so, how do you go about it? That's what we're going to discuss in today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Rednecked video. Again, my name's Chris. If you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, your deck, your garage, or heck, even a spare room in your house if that's the way you want to do it. Today we're talking about trimming a quail's beak. Is it ever really something that you need to do? Honestly, you probably don't ever really need to do it, or at least very, very seldom. Uh, but some people really like to trim their beaks. Quail's beaks are very much like you know, your fingernails. They, they continue to grow, and if they don't have something to wear it down on, they can overgrow. Usually it'll be the top beak that overgrows and grows down past the lower part of the beak. So, you know, sometimes it is, it is not a bad thing necessarily to go ahead and trim that off a little bit, kind of like clipping your fingernails. And when you want to go about doing that, you can use pretty much any kind of clipper you want, regular fingernail clippers. I use a, this is a uh, toenail clippers for a dog, a uh, cat, you know, something like that. Um, I find it works pretty well. And I'll bring you in close and we'll show you how to go about doing that. Uh, but again, it's something that I rarely, if ever, find that I have to do. As long as the quail have access to, you know, a sand bath and something like that, they're going to dig through that sand and they're going to keep it worn down pretty well. Every once in a while, though, you do get a bird that, for whatever reason, it grows faster or it grows more than the other birds. And again, it may be necessary to just trim it off. So let's uh, bring you in close here. Let's show you a couple of my birds. I don't really have any big problem birds in here right now, but I'm going to show you the technique nonetheless. All right, let's get this opened up, take a look at these birds. First, I'm going to show you a bird here that has no problem, don't need to tra trim their beak at all. And here's one. Let's see if we can get her to hold still in the camera for a second. You can see the, uh, well, maybe you can see it. There we go, hold still. The beak looks fine. I mean, it's just, it's normal. Uh, the top beak and the bottom beak meet, no problems whatsoever. I would not even recommend trimming that beak. Uh, let's see if I can find one that has maybe a little bit of an overgrown. Most of them are fine. All right, so here is a bird who um, is not terrible, but could stand a little bit of a beak trimming if you were gonna do it. Again, I really don't find it necessary to do pretty much ever, but here's the situation. If he'll hold still in the camera and we can get it to focus, you might be able to tell the top beak overhangs the bottom beak just a little bit. Now, if you are going to trim this beak, all you want to trim off is just the tip of the beak, just the white part. It's very much like fingernails or dog, uh, you know, toenails on a dog, something like that. So um, what I'll do is get a trimmers. And again, you can use any ones. I'm using a dog toenail trimmer. It's very much, it's pretty much easier to do this with um, two people. And it might be good to cover the bird's head so they don't kind of, uh, they kind of stay a little bit calmer. But what we're gonna do is just trim off just, if I can get him to hold still, just the tip of his beak. There we go, there we go, there we go, got it. Took me a couple of times here. Those clippers aren't very sharp. I probably need to get some other ones. But now you can see, well, maybe you can see if I can get him to close his mouth here. <laughs> it's hard to do on camera. Now you can see it just kind of lines up just right. And as long as you just stay in the white part of that, don't get back into the, uh, to the quick of the beak. Um, you don't really want to do that. That's a, a very sensitive part on the birds, and it will bleed a lot if you get it back into that. Um, but I think we're good on this guy. You can see now, beak kind of lines up. It's a little bit tricky. Like I said, it's easier to do with two people and it might be easier to do if you have somebody hold the bird and you kind of clip on the other side. Uh, but really, it's not that big of a process. This bird's going to be just fine. Let me get him back in the cage. All right, so you can see it's a pretty simple process. Again, just stay in the white part of that. Just the tip of the beak is all you want to clip off. And 90% of the time, I don't find it necessary to do at all. Even with that bird there that I showed you, He's fine. He doesn't need me to clip the end of his beak off. I just had some questions come up about how to go about doing it, so I thought I'd demonstrate that on uh, film. I really, I very seldom, if ever, find it necessary. The only time I ever really find it necessary is if you've got a bird that really, the beak really overgrows the bottom. But as long as they're still able to eat and as long as they're still able to uh, drink and function just fine, there's really no reason to go ahead and trim that beak like that. Um, you can give them other things that will keep their beaks worn down. Sometimes just a block of wood in there, they'll get up there and rub their noses on it or their, 
beaks on it and they'll keep it worn down just fine or even a sandbox does a pretty good job because they'll shuffle through that sand and in doing that they'll keep the beak kind of worn down so it's really not something that you should probably ever have to do in uh, most cases but if you do now you know how to do it thank you guys so much for watching this video as always god bless